السلام عليكم ورحمة الله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وكنتني إن شاء الله تعالى with the fiqh of worship and uh, last time we talked about wiping over the socks and the six negators of wudu نواقد الوضوء The six things that negates the wudu. Uh, and then uh, today, inshallah ta'ala, briefly, we'll talk about al-ghusl. We'll talk about al-ghusl. And al-ghusl is, you know, taking a shower. But it's a very specific uh, way to do so. Uh, it's like wudu, an act of worship, means of purification, as a condition for the salah. Al-ghusl is, or taking a shower in a particular way, is also one of the things that is ta'abbud lillah. You worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you purify yourself uh, with uh, al-ghusl, which basically covering the entire body with water, washing the entire body with water, with a pure water of course, in a specific way. And that includes the madmada and, and al-istinshaq the mouth and the nose. So um, this ghusl is uh, mandatory, is a condition if a person is in a major, uh, as they say, the tahara, there is minor tahara and there is major tahara. And the minor tahara is to make wudu. The major tahara is to perform al ghusl or to cover one's body with water, with madmada and istinshaq. If certain things happens, one of which is if, uh, you know, after the monthly menses of a woman or after the after birth bleeding, al-hayd or nafas, if a disbeliever becomes a Muslim, uh, if a Muslim dies, then the ghusl is mandatory, not for the one that died because he died, but it's mandatory for those who are alive to wash him. And also when it comes to Uh, relations between a husband and his wife or uh, the uh, seminal fluid if it comes out from the person. So, uh, you know, the, these are um, things if it happens that makes the ghusl necessary and mandatory for the person to be in state of purification. How to perform ghusl? It has to have an intention and covering the entire body with water, with madmada and al-istinshaq, with the mouth and the nose. So the intention is one of the pillars of ghusl. And the significance of the intentions is if a person, for example, is used to take a shower every day, in the morning, for example. And if he did that without the intention that this is a ghusl, to be in the purification that what makes it permissible for him to make salah and so on. If he, after he took his shower, let's say he went to work and then he discovered that he had to take a shower, ghusl, basically, because he was in a major state of uh, not tahara, then in that case, that ghusl that he did in the morning is not valid because it was not with an intention that this is a, a, a religious ghusl, if it's correct to say that. So the intentions has to be there. Uh, so if a person does this, that is sufficient with niyyah and the entire body is washed with water, with madmada and istinshaq, with the mouth and the nose. There's a, they always mention the perfect way to make ghusl. This is sufficient, meaning that if, it, if he does this, the ghusl is valid. But there's a perfect way to do the ghusl following the way the Prophet والسلام, and that is to have the intention, of course, that this is ghusl, and then to wash the hands three times, and to wash one's private part, then after that to make wudu, a complete wudu, and then to wash the head, to make sure that the water reaches the root of one's head, whether it's to be washed three times or so and to get one's finger into the hair so that the water reaches the root of the head. And then uh, to wash the rest of the body, the right side first, 
top and bottom, and then the left side of the body, top and bottom, and with rubbing one's body while washing, and not to use excessiveness in water. So this is the perfect way of making ghusl. You can count how many things we said here in that particular order, in that particular way. So I'll say it again so that you can write it in Chalnota. The perfect way to make ghusl is to have the niya, the intentions to make ghusl. Then to wash your hands three times. To wash your hands three times. Then washing the private parts. Number four, then to make complete wudu. Number five, to wash the head thoroughly, three times. Number six, to make takhleel of a shah, to use both hands to go into the hair, especially if a person has long hair, with his hands to the root of the hair. Then next, I'm not sure how many points now here, then to wash the entire body, the right side first, and then the left side. And then after that, a tadlik, to rub your body with your hand, which is a normal thing when people take a shower, to make sure that the entire body is covered with water. The last thing is, do not use excessive water. It means once you're done and you did what is needed, there's no need to stay under the shower. And sometimes, you know, people like to use that, but that's not a recommended thing. A person should not make or use excessiveness of water, even if there's abundance of water. Only whatever is needed. If a person needs more because he needs to, uh, you know, there's dirt on his body or he didn't take a shower for a long time, so he needs to clean himself properly, things like this, there's no harm. But in general, there's no excessiveness of water, of just using water for no reason. Okay, so how many points here? I have nine points. If you don't have nine points, then very good. So <clears throat> one more time, to have the Neya of Ghusl and to wash your hands three times. Number three, to wash the private part. Number four, to make complete wudu. Number five, to wash the head three times or more, but just to wash it thoroughly. Number six, to use your hand to get into the hair for the water to reach the root of the hair. Number seven, to wash the entire body, starting with the right side and then to the left side. Number eight, to rub the body with your hand. And number nine, not to use excessiveness of water. This is something that is mentioned in the hadith of Ibn Abbas, radiallahu anhu, the famous hadith in wudu. Remember, we had a famous hadith in wudu. Famous hadith in wudu. This now, the hadith that I'm about to say, a famous hadith in ghusl. Does anybody remember the famous hadith in wudu? Who is the narrator, if you remember, of the famous hadith in wudu? Like once you talk about wudu, the famous hadith of wudu is narrated by, that describes how to make wudu. And I remember mentioning that, that this hadith, MashaAllah, Barakallahu Feek, Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu an, MashaAllah, very good, very good. So the famous hadith in wudu is hadith of Uthman when he made wudu and he said that the Prophet Sallallahu made wudu the like of my wudu, mashallah. And the hadith of ghusl, the details of the ghusl, ghusl is hadith of Ibn Abbas. Hadith of Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma. So uh, this hadith is in Bukhari and Muslim. And Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma, he said that my aunt Maymuna radiallahu anha, the wife of the Prophet sallam, she said that, uh, explained to him the ghusl, the way of the ghusl of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, that uh, she uh, brought close to the Prophet sallam, uh, the container where, where he make ghusl from, so he washed his hands two times or three times. 
and then he outside of the in a, outside of the container as we talked about that before if a person is in Geneva or he wakes up from a week up from sleep not to immerse one's hand in the container of water but to wash it outside to pour water from it outside to wash the hand three times first and then the prophet ali sallallahu alaihi wasallam he washed his private part then uh, he washed it with his left hand and then in that specific hadith he uh, rubbed his hand on the ground he rubbed it very strongly on the ground to clean one's hand so a person can use soap or whatever means then the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam made wudu for the salah wudu ahu salah you, you probably heard that in some of the narrations the Prophet ﷺ didn't wash his foot. That's fine. But in this narration, he made an entire wudu. Then he put on his, uh, poured on his head three handful of water. Then he washed the rest of, the, of his body. Then, then he moved from the spot that he was standing. He washed his foot in a different spot. And then she brought to him mindil or a towel or so. And in that particular narration, the Prophet ﷺ did not take it. That means he did not dry himself up. <clears throat> uh, that doesn't mean that it's recommended not to dry oneself up. Because the Prophet ﷺ in some other narrations, he dried himself after wudu and after ghusl. So it, it shows that the matter is at ease. A person can, you know, if he doesn't want to dry himself up, it's too hot, for example, that's fine. If he wants to dry himself, that's also fine. Whatever is easy, whatever is, uh, you know, the norm. But um, once in a while, right, if a person, if one, as, as even some of them, they said, not to do takalluf. That means if a person, for example, made wudu, and don't make a big deal if you don't find a towel, it's okay. Right? Uh, especially if it's, you know, summertime and things like this. But in some places where it's extremely cold, a person wants to, to dry himself up because it's cold. So there is no particular way in the sunnah whether it's to dry or not to dry. It's either ways have been narrated from the Prophet Also with the washing of the foot in a separate spot. So uh, whether to this is something recommended to be done, yes, especially if the water gathers and rises up and covers the, the foot while making or taking a shower. And that's why some said to uh, leave the foot till the end or to wash the foot from the very beginning in the wudu and then at the end to wash it again uh, by stepping out of the same spot uh, since the water probably have risen and covered the foot. Uh, and this is something that is again recommended. What is sufficient if a person just washes his entire body and with madmada and istinshaq, that is sufficient. He did ghusl as long as the intention is to make ghusl. Right? So, um, to be on the safe side, and I'm saying to be on the safe side, uh, if a person does not need ghusl, is not mandatory for him to do ghusl, make wudu. To be on the safe side. But, the correct opinion, inshallah ta'ala, is that if a person does not need ghusl, he's not having a condition to make ghusl, but he made ghusl anyway with the intention of making ibadah, salah, as a mean of purification, like he would make wudu, that is sufficient for the person, and that makes him in state of purification. Right? So, But it's better to make wudu in this case uh, to be away from the differences of opinions among the people of knowledge. The junub, or the one that is mandatory for him to make ghusl, uh, you know, as we said, there are more than one situation here. If a person is in state of Janaba, and the, uh, the state of Janaba is, uh, comes as a result of relations, or the, uh, the semen coming out from the person, so and there's no shyness, of course, in matters of the religion and, and people need to, to learn these matters. Uh, but if a person is in state of uh, Janaba, if a person is in state of Janaba, 
uh, that means uh, certain things are forbidden for the person. Right? So certain things are forbidden. Uh, one of which is tawaf or salah. Salah and tawaf are forbidden, of course. To make salah, to make tawaf, to touch the mushaf. To touch uh, the mushaf. Uh, these things are forbidden for the person. Um, which is different than the menses. The menses or after birth bleeding, still the salah is forbidden. The tawaf also is forbidden, except in rare situations after hajj or so, if there's no means uh, to do the tawaf al-ifada, which is a different situation. Uh, but for the ha'id or nufasa, they can uh, read the Quran, but also without touching the mushaf. The junub, the one in Geneva, it is not permissible to even read Quran. Because it's something that can be lifted quickly, which is that state of al Janab. And so this is basically with regards to uh, what's forbidden in general for the person in state of Janab. Uh, there are recommended acts of ghusl. As Muhammad, they always mention the books of fiqh, which is the ghusl before making or while making ihram for hajj and umrah. Those, for those who wash the dead, it's recommended only, not mandatory. Uh, if a person um, gets up from um, coma or uh, being insane or something like that, uh, some even mentioned the ghusl before a person enters Mecca. Uh, the ghusl for uh, the, the repeated relations between husband and wife. Um, and of course, the ghusl of uh, al Jumu'ah, the ghusl of Al Jumu'ah, the day of Jumu'ah, and even some, some said that this is mandatory, right? And one ghusl is sufficient if a person is doing ghusl that is mandatory, and it's also a recommended ghusl. That one ghusl is sufficient not to make more than one ghusl. And for the woman, the ghusl for the woman is the same as the man, except that she doesn't have to undo her hair if she if her hairs are in braids if it's a ghusl of Janeba. But if it's a ghusl from menses, she has to undo her hair, which is once a month. She has to undo the hair to wash the hair. Um, so the Prophet ﷺ uh, used to make ghusl uh, with khamsat amdad, with five amdad, right? like five handfuls of, of water. That means he did not use to use excessive amount of water alayhi salatu uh, wassalam and um, you know that's why again the issue of being doing israf or excessiveness is something to be avoided ghusl al jumu'ah or for the day of jumu'ah for those who go to jumu'ah in the masjid uh, it's very stressed sunnah and some said it's mandatory because of the hadith of the prophet sallam al ghusl yawm al jumu'ah wajibun ala kulli muhtalim the ghusl in the day of Jumu'ah is wajib, mandatory for every muhtalim, someone that reach the age of puberty. Uh, but again, the majority of the ulama on the opinion that it's sunnah mu'akadah, very stressed sunnah. And it shows that when people are in the gathering uh, to, uh, to um, um, I guess, to, um, to protect the Muslims from bad smell, from anything from oneself, this is a mandatory thing for the Muslim to be kind and, and, and good towards them. That's the wisdom behind it. So that's with the subject of Ghusl al Jumu'ah. And that starts from after Fajr, and it's of course it's more recommended before, closer to the time of Jumu'ah, unless a person has a condition or worried about his health. That's a different situation. He can still go for, for Jumu'ah without taking the Ghusl. So this is briefly uh, some of the things in Ghusl. We did not cover everything. We even have questions in some of the Masail of al but uh, this is inshallah ta'ala in brief. And if you have any questions, go ahead inshallah. That means without reason, you can do ghusl seeking rewards uh, from Allah. Uh, yeah, if you, if a person, uh, you know, taking a ghusl as means of purification, that's fine. This is, uh, it lifts away the, the state that he's in and makes him in purification. Okay, uh, is ghusl on Jum'a day different from ghusl of Janab? No, it's the same ghusl. It's the same, uh, it's the same ghusl as the ghusl of Janab. 
the same way even, to be done in the same way. If making wudu in bathroom, should we say the dua in our hearts or wait until we leave bathroom and say with lips? Well, this is one of the issues of the situation of, you know, something that is new where the bathrooms are in the same place as showers and so on. So um, it's always mentioned if you're building a house, try to separate both so that you don't get yourself into that situation. But uh, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best, it's okay to say Bismillah. And one of the things that I heard from one of the great scholars, uh, he gave a, a, an opinion in that matter, uh, in which of course, Bismillah, to say Bismillah, <clears throat> since it's according to the majority of the ulama, it's Sunnah Mu'akkada. So you can still say it uh, before wudu and so on, even if you are in that place, or to say it outside and then go in <clears throat> say, but it's okay to say it inside. And he mentioned that one of the major difference between the places of um, relieving oneself, the bathrooms basically, at the time of the Prophet Sallam or in the, you know, in some parts of the world and the, the modern ways of, uh, of the bathrooms, how they are, is that the, once you flush the toilet, right, the impurities goes away, which is different than uh, the normal way where it stays or it's, it's, uh, it's present and so on. Uh, even though, you know, just something to be mentioned like that on the side, not to make it as if it's nothing whatsoever, but to say Bismillah, of course, the place should not, you should not recall and you should not make victory, you should not do any of this. But with Bismillah, you know, you should not leave Bismillah before you make wudu, before you make usl. So even if you did not have the means to step outside or to say it outside, say it inside, and that will be sufficient, inshallah ta'ala. Okay, um, alaykum as wa rahmatullahi Is mistaking also part of usl? Or like perhaps preferred mistaking? Miswak maybe? If uh, that's what you mean. Miswak is before usl too, yes. Because it's before every wudu and you make wudu in, uh, in usl. So that's, if that's what you mean with, with uh, maybe miswak. Um, can the steps washing your head three times and getting the root of your hair be combined and can be rubbing your body and washing the left and right be combined uh, yes of course but the reason why it's both mentioned because they are both uh, you know diff separate actions like if you wash the head without rubbing that's sufficient but rubbing is always mentioned as a recommended act so you can do the three times while rubbing yes now and the same thing, uh, washing the left and the right would be combined. That's fine. But washing the right first and then the left side uh, second, it's recommended. Is Ghusl on Friday mandatory? According to the majority of the it's not mandatory. But it should not be left, even if it's not mandatory. The Ghusl is for women too on Jumu'ah? No. The Ghusl is for is only or men are very stressed for those who are going to Jumu'ah. So if a woman is going to Jumu'ah, Jumu'ah is not mandatory for her anyway. So it is not something that is stressed as it's in the case of men. And if people are not going for Jumu'ah because of whatever reason, they close the masjid, the pandemics, whatever, then the ghusl of Jumu'ah is not you know, recommended in this case because it's only recommended or stressed for those who are going to the masjid in Jumu'ah. When one is making ghusl, do they have to touch the scalp or is it fine as long as the water touches? Or the hair and scalp. You don't have to touch the scalp, but it's recommended to do the takhleel. And the takhleel or getting your hands to rub your skull, this is recommended, but it's not mandatory as long as the one reaches the, the, the head now. Uh, is it read or recite or both before making us? Uh, you mean bismillah? That's before making us. If you missed, why making us? Oh my goodness, no, no problem, inshallah. Um, can you do ghusl for no reason? Making ghusl for no reason, it's something shouldn't be done. Um, it's, uh, you have to have a reason for making ghusl. Even some of the Ahmad, they said it's bid'ah to just make ghusl for no reason. 
you know so it's um, uh, okay is it um, sufficient to use a toothbrush before making wudu yes inshallah even though so what is best but it's sufficient to use the toothbrush as means of cleaning the teeth. It's meant to clean your teeth before making wudu. So if you don't have a siwak, then you can use the toothbrush. Uh, next week, do we plan to discuss istinja for next Wednesday? I thought we did talk about istinja. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. If we didn't, we can always repeat it, inshallah. Uh, what should we do to be the, due to an absence of water or whether it's so cold if ghusl is mandatory? at And next, actually, next subject is at tayammum To you, tayammum which they call it dry ablution, if a person doesn't have water or if it's extremely cold and there's no means to heat the water and a person fears for his life, then he can do tayammum. He can do tayammum. Uh, during the uh, the wudu part, and of course there are means to make it easy. Many times people can heat water, right? So if you have, and with heating water, if you heat a very small amount of water, like a cup of water, if you heat it and then you add to it cold water, you have a perfect temperature. You can use that small amount of water to make ghusl. If it's done in the proper way, and you do it from a container. Uh, during the wudu part, do you have to cover yourself? You don't have to cover yourself. You can do that while in the shower. No. It's okay to uh, mess on top of the shoes instead of socks. Uh, in the subject of a mess, you can do that as long as the shoes covers what is uh, mandatory to be washed, meaning it's a shoe that goes higher uh, and covers the ankles. But if it's the normal shoe, then it's not permissible to wipe over it because it doesn't cover the what needs to be washed all the way to the ankles, to the top of the ankles. And may I say ghusl and shower are not the same? Yes, you can say. They're not the same. But it's, you know, usually as all of the different things that we have to translate, that's one of the things that should be translated. We should understand what it means and keep it as ghusl. The same thing, wudu. Right? People should say wudu after explaining what wudu is. But to say ablution, this can mean something else. Or the same thing with prayers. We should say salah, because salah is a specific thing. Prayers can mean to people many other things. So now, jazakallah khair. I don't believe I have notes for this. Does anyone else? Um, if anybody has, if we talked about this, let us know. If not, then uh, we can talk about it again, inshallah ta'ala, anyway. Um, if you're wearing the socks under the shoes, is it permissible? Uh, yes, some said it's permissible and uh, as, as making it one, but it's it's best to take it off uh, in that case. Uh, say, for example, if you have shoes that covers the ankles, right? Uh, one of the things that you should, uh, you might not want to wash or to wipe over the shoes is because once you take your shoes off, then you have to wash your foot next time. That means you have to take the socks off too. So if you have your shoes on, it's better to wipe over the socks because the shoes sometimes gets taken off more frequently than the socks. So it's better to wipe over the socks and not the shoes. But if you wipe over the shoes, which is higher, a boot or something like that, then it's fine. But once you take the shoes off, then next time you make wudu, you have to, um, you have to take the socks also off. In ghusl, at which point we should say bismillah. Just before you make ghusl, just before you make wudu, just before you make the wudu. Uh, can you please confirm that minimum is intention and wash the entire body plus wa wash the mouth and nose? Yes, that's the minimum. That's what's sufficient. And that's the minimum requirement for ghusl now. So because of the time, we'll stop here and then we'll continue, inshallah ta'ala, next time. And... Uh, we, you remind me, inshallah, next time if we want to uh, review the istinja, I'll do that, inshallah. Do you see, we two bismillah, once the beginning of the ghusl, once during the wudu. No, just one. Just one. Uh, bismillah is sufficient before making the wudu because that wudu is part of the ghusl. It's not a separate wudu and that's it because it doesn't do anything to the state of Janab. So it's one bismillah now. 
the minimum of ghusl is to cover the entire body with water, with mouth and uh, and the nose, uh, and having the intentions that this is ghusl. So the intentions and the entire body is washed with water, including the mouth and the nose. That's the minimum requirement for ghusl. If a person does this, his ghusl is vague. Barakallahu طيب وصافي إن شاء الله بكرة the next class وصلى الله وسلم بارك على محمد وعلى صحبه وسلم والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله